I had a student way back when I was first teaching um, in Bob Shea. A couple of years ago, he uh, called me up and uh, wanted to come and see me with a friend of his. And I had no idea that uh, he was a famous singer, Roger Waters, bassist with the Pink Floyd. And then came a box to the house I had never seen an iPod before. And every Tuesday and Thursday morning, uh, I go on the bicycle for 15 minutes and uh, I plug in to uh, Roger. Women with hats like the rear ends of pink ducks applauded you, my poems. These are the women whose husbands I meet on airplanes, who close their briefcases and ask, what are you in? <laughs> I look in their eyes. I tell them I'm in poetry. <laughs> Bob Dylan. Uh got a Nobel Prize in Literature, but his, his lyrics are not poems. They do not work without music. To me, the way into the poem is the sound it makes, but it is not musical sound. And what about you? You laughing. You in the blue jeans, laughing at your mother who wears hats, and at your father who rides airplanes with a briefcase watching his grammar. Will you ever be old and dumb like your creepy parents? <laughs> not you, not you, not you, not you, not you. <laughs> At 88, I'm solitary. Each season, my balance gets worse. Sometimes I fall. Old age is a ceremony of losses. I watch out the window. Pleased to watch birds, barns, and flowers. Out the window, I watch a white landscape that turns pale green, dark green, yellow and red, brown under bare branches, until snow falls again. Whatever the season, I watch the barn. Over 80 years, it has changed from a working barn to a barn for looking at. Jane Kenyon was my student. She was smart, she wrote poems. 
Later, I asked her to dinner, which in 1970 always included breakfast. One night, we spoke of marriage. Quickly, we changed the subject, because I was 19 years older, and if we married, she would be a widow so long. For almost 20 years, I woke before Jane and brought her coffee in bed. Now it is April, and Jane has been dead for more than two decades. Now and then, especially at night, solitude loses its soft power and loneliness takes over. I am grateful when solitude returns. It's an entertaining um, email about from Dick Wilfrich about all the other Donald Halls who write books. There is one um, in Death Row in Pennsylvania. Okay. So there are Donald Halls everywhere. I am taken care of by women and only by women. Kendall every day, Carol three times a week, then Pam. The mail is delivered by little Louise. In the Danbury Post Office, somebody went there and uh, speaking of me, and they said, oh yeah, Hall's Harem. In the new book, I think I'm going to dedicate it to uh, these four women. It's three bananas. Ice cream, bananas, milk, croissant. How many croissants? Yeah. Um, how many croissants? One. And um, pineapple? Yeah. That's but it? I finished that big thing of okay. pineapple that you gave me. Okay. Three days. At the beginning, I went for a moment a woman because I couldn't stand the notion of uh, being married again or settling with one woman ever again. I have had other girlfriends, and I've had the same girlfriend now uh, for, uh, oh, maybe 17 years in a row. She knows, Linda knows, uh, that Jane is the love of my life, but she is remarkably uh, without jealousy.
I don't believe that a day has gone by in 22 years when I have not thought of Jane. I went to the uh, uh, grave about four times a day and talked to her. My companion was her absence. Earlier this year, I grieved for her in a way I had never grieved before. I was sick and thought I was dying. Every day of her dying, I stayed by her side a year and a half. It was miserable that Jane should die so young, and it was redemptive that I could be with her every hour of every day. Last January, I grieved again, this time that she would not sit beside me as I died. 